What is your favorite book? Um, Les Mains du Miracle, which in English translates to the Miracle Pants. So my favorite book is called L'Etranger. It's written by Albert Camus. What's the book about? Um, it's situated in World War II area um, in Germany, and it's a doctor that helps Himmler with his pains. And through this, he kind of like helps rescue thousands of people um, because he's the only one that can like help with the pain. So the storyline is about a young man who struggled to fit in with society and he ends up getting involved in the wrong social group and killing somebody. And then the final sort of second half of the book follows his court case and how he's condemned to death. Well, I learned a lot of historical facts and it also inspired me with humanity and like how people can have an influence on other people and how one man can do so much for other people. Um, I think it's really taught me about society and individuals and how everyone's relationship with society is different. Is it like a practical thing? Maybe something in your daily life that you now do differently? Um, I think I look at everyone and think about their backstory rather than just assuming things about people. Not really, because it's a very fiction and historical book, but I mean, that's what I like to read, so I don't know if I really apply anything in my everyday life, but it kind of, I regain faith in humanity and it kind of inspired me because, well, you have an issue to everything and you have choices and this shows that Jesus' choice is not always the best thing. So would you recommend it? Yes, definitely. The English version is called Stranger. Yeah, definitely. My favorite book is The Making of the Comrade. My favorite book is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I think my favorite book would be A Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Dr. Al Gonzalez is currently the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The storyline is basically taking you through a journey of his political career. Um, yeah, it's like a psychological love story. So a love story between two people that aren't very compatible and both have a lot of issues. It's about a man who is obsessed with his youth and he becomes so obsessed that he transfers his life source or his soul into a painting of himself and it ends up destroying him and as he becomes more tainted by society, he taints the painting instead. This is something that you've learned from the book that's maybe inspired you. Yeah, I think it, it, it inspired me to think about like the importance of timing um, the importance of like perseverance, um, not giving up. Um, most importantly, the importance of strategy uh, and keeping focused on the, the long-term goal. Well, it's a book I learned, I read when I was in school in English class, and I think when I read it in school, I really hated it because it was really hard to understand. But it definitely taught me to like pause when I'm reading and actually identify like what the author meant and what's like the deeper meaning. And I think from then on, I had a much greater appreciation of books for sure. Yeah, I really was inspired by how corruption in a society and how that affects a person's soul and their mindset on life. Because in the beginning of the book, he was so focused on beauty and youthfulness and how that was his image. And then once he knew he could preserve it, he slowly became became more and more corrupt. So I think the importance of corruption and its effect on society is a really important message to come out of this book. Would you recommend it to others? I would, yes, especially if you have a political interest. I would say it's something you should read. Of course, yeah. It's really hard to go through at first because it's quite intense, but uh, definitely worth it. Absolutely, I would. It's my favorite book, so I recommend it to everyone. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So my favorite book probably is uh, Republic by Plato. The Grand Sophie by George Hare. So he discusses by asking, well, what makes a person just or makes a person moral? And then extrapolates to, well, if you were to govern a country, how would we do it to create a just state and just society? And kind of uses the state as an analogy for the person um, to figure out what morality is. Um, and in doing so, he's, he's very allegorical. He uses kind of stories to illustrate his points, and it's just quite fascinating. It's basically about this girl that has never been to Regency Victorian England, and her father's from this high society family, and suddenly she's plonked back into this society, and she's a misfit, and she's very unconventional, 
and she, you know, she drives horses on St. James's, which was unheard of back in the days. One thing which she kind of emphasizes is the role of discipline and how interlinked morality, morality is with discipline. So I guess um, that would be one thing, kind of the emphasis on self-control and, you know, not, uh, not drinking too much which I think is a challenge when you're a student, I guess. So I feel like me as a brown girl, I feel like it's um, it was quite indicative of how the situation is in my community because it's very conservative. Women are kind of, you know, always seen as the underdogs because they, you know, kind of underrepresented in every sphere of life. So I just really enjoyed seeing her be so unapologetically herself. Definitely a lot you can learn. Every time I go back and read it, there's some extra hidden truth that I missed the first time, which is just fantastic. It's full of great quotes, great, a great uh, packets of information. So that, that's my favorite book. One thing I learned from the book is to follow your instincts and to not care too much about what people think and to just to be true to your core self. Oh, 100 percent. I have been for a while now and yeah, would recommend it. I would definitely, I recommend it to all my girlfriends. I feel like it's such a good time. It's liberating as a woman to read that book because it um, just kind of allows you to, that space to just be yourself without feeling judged by other people. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>